Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplay. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarsen Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Azure Wolf, Fear No Equal, and Longfish. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the sixth and final encounter in an IB Slayer, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, ability, spells, items in hand. 79 hit points remaining. I have my Wand of the War Mage in my hand. Four first level slots. Three third, two fourth, two fifth. Holding plus two short bow, using plus one arrows. My instrument of the bards has fly, invisibility, Levitate, Protection from Good and Evil, Entangle, Shillelagh, and Speak with Animals still available. I've got two scrolls of haste left. I have 139 out of 139 hit points. Currently at 138 hit points. I have my Staff of Python and Shield Plus 2 in hand. I have 1 level 1, 2 level 2, 2 level 3, 1 level 4, 2 level 5, and both charges of Channel Divinity. I have 172 of 172 hit points, carrying my Great Axe plus 2. I still have my Javelin of Lightning available, two Circlets of Blasting. I have Second Wind, Action Surge, and one use of Indomitable still available. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. A lot of stuff going on here. The Dreaded Eye Beast. Eye Beast has got armor. It's got the ability to hover for 20 feet. It has a passive perception of 22 and a maximum perception of 32, so you're going to have to make those rolls. They're immune to the prone condition as they float. Primarily, they have a main eye that has an anti-magic cone. Anti-magic cone has a 150-foot range. At the start of each turn, it decides which way it is looking. They can bite, which I would be very surprised I will ever do, and they have a number of eye rays. On its turn, it rolls 3d10, re-rolling duplicates, and those are the eye rays that it will shoot on its turn. The eye rays have a 120-foot range. They can charm, paralyze, fear, slow, enervate, telekinesis, sleep, petrify, disintegrate, or do death to a creature. They all have different abilities, they all have different saves, so we'll hit them when we hit them. Eye Beast has a legendary action. It can take three legendary actions. They're going to be at the end of your turns. The legendary action is to fire one of its eyes randomly like it normally does. You're fighting the Eye Beast in its lair, so at initiative 20, it has three lair actions it can do. It can open up a 50-foot square of difficult terrain on the ground. It can have the walls within 120 feet of it sprout grasping appendages and reach out to grapple you. It can open up a solid surface within 60 feet of it, and it can fire one of its random eye beams out. An anti-magic cone divorces the area from magical energy. Spells and magical effects are suppressed. This includes aid and hero's feast. When the effect is unsuppressed, your maximum goes back up, but your current does not. Oof. Yep, a spell slot that is suppressed when it is cast still takes this expended spell slot, but it doesn't function. Properties and powers of magic items are suppressed. For example, a plus two short bow would only function as a short bow. Summoned objects and creatures like, I don't know, quaddles or owls temporarily wink out of existence as long as the spot that they were in is in the zone. If I remember right, the eyes do not count as magic spells, right? They do. Do we know if it has resistance against non-magic weapons? It's not. It is immune to prone. That's the only resistance or immunity it has. Terrain and effects. Pretty standard for an IB Slayer. It's a bunch of tunnels. There's a pool of water at the end of it. Pool of water is deep enough that the eye beast can submerge itself if it so chooses. The room has a 20 foot ceiling and the water is an additional 10 feet deep. Tactics, what do you guys think for tactics in this fight? So do we think we can draw it into the tunnels? Maybe. Yeah, it's probably gonna, when it can, use that layer action to shoot through the solid object. Well, yeah, but it can only do that once every two rounds. We still get a lot of value in drawing it into the tunnels. This is maybe a peep and shoot sort of affair until and unless the beholder is willing to come into the tunnels, at which case we can get on all sides of it. Yeah, because I'm not going to be effective until we get out of that cone. Right, but as long as the rogue can peep and shoot from the southern tunnel, the beholder can't target us unless it spends its time readying. Can it ready multiple eye beams or can it only ready one? It's a single action to fire three of them. It is not a multi-attack, which is normally excluded from those sorts of abilities. I would say that it could fire all three. Rules as written, it seems like it could fire all three. So that actually doesn't work as well. The rogue could potentially get paralyzed on a readied counterattack. Yep. So I guess just get in there and spread? Well, no, because that central corridor is directly in front of it, so it's going to be able to keep that covered most of the time. So the wizard will have to be in the room and able to move 
in order to brawl with it. It's probably going to end up with me being able to dance around the cone. So I guess we just got to get in there and brawl. Yeah, and if we get near to the walls, one of us is probably going to get grappled. Yeah, it can only do that every other turn, and grapple doesn't impede us all that much. It's just, like, kind of annoying. Cleric, I'm probably going to take a lot of damage this round. Due to over channel. Yeah, I got healing spells ready, hopefully. I got, like, six, seven spell slots ready for healing, and then I have, like, potions and uh, scrolls. I'm waiting to see how big this cone is. 150 feet, it's massive. That's kind of what I'm waiting for, too. If that's the case, then magic just basically doesn't function in front of this guy. Especially in this... Yeah, and like I said with the, when I was asking about the ice, if the melee wants to keep in front of it at all times, that's probably the best because you can avoid the beams that way. Yeah. I'm just going to be chucking spears at this thing. 150 foot cone, Jesus. Well, if you need a third crown, I've got one. What would I do with the crown? I'm not going to be able to cast with it. Throw it at him? It's one of those moments where I wish alchemical bombs were really a thing in D&D. Can somebody give me a summary of the tactics you guys decided? Brawl. There's no ability to use magic while on ground. There's no way that we can deny him the anti-magic field because it's so huge and the ground is so limited. So it's basically just protect the rogue and brawl. Let's do it then. Roll up initiative. Anybody have higher than a 20? Quado has a 22. Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? The I Beast has a 17. Oh. Who's got between a 15 and a 10? Rogue is a 14. 14 on the wizard. 11 on the fighter. 6. A 2. Top of the order, Snake. What does Snake do? A Snake has got a dash. Fly 90 feet. To behind the beholder. Okay, cool. It moves into the zone and it disappears. Oh, wait. It starts out pointing forward. Okay, now. Yeah. First layer action we're going to do is an I Beam. I rolled a 9, which is a disintegration ray. Cleric, give me a DC 16 dexterity save. It's a 9. Take 48 points of force damage. At the lair is the eye beast. The eye beast is going to advance. We just move forward for 20 feet. Can't see anybody, so we might as well dash. That puts everybody in the zone. The owl blinks out for the moment. Aid and Hero's Feast both drop. Fighter, can you tell me how many hit points you lose? I have been miscounting my total HP this whole time. It should have been 182. I was at 172. 18 HP that I just lost. Rogue, do you lose 28 hit points? Yes. Cleric, do you lose 28 hit points? No, I only lose 9. Wizard, do you lose 28 hit points? No, because I'm below my maximum already. So do you lose any? Nope. You are already 28 points lower. I was at 79 out of 86. That's the eye beast. After that is the rogue. Ugh. Let's go ahead and move as many squares as I can directly east and then take the hide action that'll be 10 to there one southwest because then i have something to hide behind 25 25 will do it past perception 22 after that is the legendary action he doesn't have line of sight to anybody so the legendary action isn't going to do anything after that we go to the wizard my best bet is to go to the southeast as far as i can and call dodge heading for that south tunnel after that is the legendary action doesn't have anybody you can see so he doesn't do anything Fighter. I will move my full 12 spaces as close to him as I can on the north corridor, and then tuck me into the wall if I can avoid line of sight there. Yeah, you definitely avoid line of sight. Another legendary action that is not available. The owl is gone. Cleric. Dash me 10 spaces to the northeast. You good there? As long as I'm out of line of sight. Yeah, you are. After the cleric is the snake. Snake's still gone. After the snake is the lair. 50 foot square of ground becomes slimy. The area is difficult terrain until next initiative count of 20. 50 foot square area. Wow. That's huge on this map. Yep. Yeah, this is a tough map. Slime appears underfoot. After the lair, we go to the eye beast. We're not going to close the beam, but it's going to move to there. So he's going to rotate the beam like that. Owl comes back. The snake comes back. Cleric and fighter, your magical abilities return. And we're going to start blasting. I got a fear ray, I got a slowing ray, and I got a sleep ray. Throw the sleep ray against the fighter. Give me a DC 16 wisdom save. Advantage on this because Hero's Feast is now active once more. 15. Oh, I'm gonna let it lie. Sleep isn't that bad. I have a cloak of protection, which puts me at 16. The next one is gonna be a fear ray. Give me a DC 16 wisdom save versus fear. Immune to poison or being frightened. Thank you. Forgot that one. So seldom relevant. And the slowing ray is gonna go after the cleric. Give me a DC 16 dexterity save. 19. You pass, you're not affected by it. That's my eye beast. After that is the rogue. I would like to move behind the cleric. Your abilities return. Yep. Bonus action, hide. Still check as a 25. You make it. I do. With advantage to Plink and Eye Beast. 22 to hit because all my stuff is on and active. 22 connects. Unfortunately, it's a weak roll. 38 points of damage. 38 eye. 
get it. You have a legendary action you want to shoot me with? If you're done with your turn. I'm going to move back behind my rock. Into the zone. I have a legendary action. I'm going to use it. Telekinetic Ray. Quaddle, please give me a DC 16 strength save. Plus 317. That will pass. It does not get pushed around. After that, we're going to go to the wizard. Keep moving south here. Stop short of the little bend there. After the wizard, we have a legendary action. It's a one. Charm Ray. Fighter, give me a DC 16 wisdom save versus charm. Hey, that's a 21. All right, that'll make it. After my legendary action, we go to the fighter. I'm going to fly into the air to skip over this difficult terrain. So go ahead and move my full distance and dash to get adjacent to the eye beast. And then we're going to action surge. See how he likes it. Attack number one. That is a 23 to hit. 23 hits. 19 damage. Attack number two. Ew. 17 to hit. 17 will miss. Punches into the natural armor, but does not break skin. Attack number three. 25 to hit, 10 damage. You good? Yeah, I'm not gonna do any bonusy stuff. After the fighter is a legendary action. Three. Three is another fear ray. DC 16 wisdom save versus, and you're still immune to fear. I'm an idiot. Okay, cool. <laughs> After the legendary action is the owl. Moving forward behind the cleric, I guess. And dodge. Cleric. I am also going to click my heels and fly. I'll put you there. You can remain in the air with flying boots. You can use the boots to fly for up to four hours. If you're flying when the duration expires, you descend at a rate of 30 feet per... I will throw a spiritual weapon at level 5 behind the eye. Excellent position. 30-20 to hit. 30-20 hits. For 16 damage. And your action action? A dodge. After that, we go to the snake. Quado's gonna fly straight at the eye beast. Maximum 90 feet. Adjacent or not adjacent? Adjacent. Okay. And then it disappears. That's the end of the snake. After that is the lair. Shoot an eye beam at you. It's a fear ray. The fear ray is shot at the fighter. The fighter is immune to it. That's the lair action. After the lair action is the eye beast. Eye beast is going to look... We're going to look straight forward. Owl is gone. Spiritual weapon ends, or...? It's not in the beam. Excellent patient, like I said before. Then we're going to move. Uh, we're going to stay right there. No, please, move. <laughs> we're going to roll up three rays. I got a four. Slowing ray. Fighter, give me a DC 16 dexterity save versus slow. Now that's a nine. I'm slowed. Your speed is halved. You cannot take reactions. You can take either an action or a bonus action, but not both. And you can repeat the save at the end of each of your turns. The next one is a telekinesis. Give me a DC 16 strength save versus telekinesis. 19. 19, you'll pass. You're not hit by telekinesis. And then finally, the death ray. Give me a DC 16 dexterity save. 10. You get indomitable? Can I find out what the death ray does before I indomitable it? Absolutely. It's going to do 10d10 necrotic damage. You die if reduced to zero. Nah, it's fine. Gamble. All right. It does 100 necrotic. I'm just kidding. <laughs> My deck save is plus one here. It's just not the good save for indomitable. Take 56 points of necrotic damage. You still up? I'm still over 100. That's gross. That was my eye beast. You don't have a reaction, so I'm going to move, and that will drop the hammer. After the eye beast, we go to the rogue. Ah, I think you're just out of range. 110 feet out. Less 25. Yeah, just outside. Yeah, so you can plank it with a dash, but that's it. Ah, uh, being a stunty is terrible. Sure, let's go ahead and dash as a bonus action. Go ahead and hide behind that rock. 25. After the rogue is the legendary action. Legendary actions will not be affected this round. After that, we go to the wizard. Just below the bin there if I dash. Fighter. Am I slowed? Yeah. Am I? Oh, no. So this is going to be weird. We're doing a little bit of a dragon grapple again. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not currently slowed. But you'll become slowed. I would like to run and jump to the Beholder. Yeah, sure. And then we're going to grapple the Beholder. <laughs> Absolutely. Give me a athletics. That's a 13. 13 is better than his 4. Whew. So what does he now do? He's grappled. Zero movement. He can hover. He is not restrained. Well, there's a difference. My next question is, what do I now do? Since that's one of your attacks in your attack action. One of your hands is occupied grappling him. So you cannot use a two-handed weapon. Do you have a one-handed weapon? No. It's going to be a punch attack then. That's fine. We'll have to catch up with the other question in a minute, which is what happens to me when I am floating in midair and <laughs> grappling? Punch attack is... You have to roll to hit first. 13 to hit. 13's a miss. And that's a 16 to hit. 16's a miss. You good? Hanging on to the eye beast. At the end of your turn you're going to save against slow again dc 16 nope yeah, i rolled a five still slow no one is targetable for the legendary action cleric run me 10 spaces straight at the beholder 
Now it's my turn. The lair action walls within 120 feet of the eye beast sprout grasping arm appendages. Each creature of its choice that starts its turn within 10 feet of the wall must make a dexterity save. All right, so we'll do that. The eye beast can't move. My movement is zero. Uh, I, I, the eye. The eye! <laughs> I can't look at you. I can't move. You guys are all worried about this fight, but you've done really well for yourselves. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, I have to get it off the fight. Okay, so this is, that's the, no, that, that's the best bet. We're gonna rotate it. Owl, still gone. Quaddle pops. Warhammer pops. We're gonna blast eye beams at the fighter. Great. We got a telekinesis ray, petrification ray, death ray. Fighter, give me a DC 16 strength save versus telekinesis. 21. 21. I needed you to fail that. You failed the task I assigned to you. Look, when did I ever succeed at anything you expected of me? Petrification. Make a DC 16 dexterity save versus petrification. That is a 15. On a failed save, you begin to turn to stone and you are restrained. You must repeat the saving throw at the end of your next turn. On a success, the effect ends. On a failure, you are petrified until freed by greater restoration. And then finally, the death ray. DC 16 dexterity save. And 12. 61 points of necrotic damage. Meh. But I'm still grappled, so I cannot move. You just put a weight on you. That's my <laughs> eye beast, Rogue. Go ahead and move south three. Give me a DC 15 dexterity save versus the arms grappling you. Halfling luck, 24. The shot on the eye beast. Why are you for going hiding? To get your magic stuff? It is a fair block of damage. That's a net one, which we're going to halfling luck into a 32. 42 points of damage. Bonus action to click my heels and then go towards the quaddle and then tuck behind the cleric with my last move. Cheeky. After that, we go to the legendary action. The legendary action is to blast the fighters, the only person I can see. Seven is a sleep ray. DC 16 wisdom, and you have advantage because of Hero's Feast. Yep. Not gonna get the job done, and now I am going to use Indomitable. 18. Truly indomitable. After that, we go to the wizard. <laughs> DC 15 dexterity versus grapple. Sure, no problem. 17. 17 will do it. Shatter with over channel at level 5. Over channel does what? Maxes the damage. 3d8 normally. 1d8 extra for every third. So it's going to be 68. 68 maximized. 48 plus 5. So it's going to be 53 damage. What's the DC? DC 18 caught. I'm going to get a 19 to save against this. Ah. Oh. Okay. That's going to push 53 down to a 26. It was worth the risk. You good there? Yeah, I'm good. After that is the legendary action. I got a 1, which is a charm ray. Fighter, please give me a DC 16 wisdom save versus charm. 16. That'll do it. After that, we're going to go to the fighter. We're going to throw another creature on the field. I'm going to crack an air elemental gem. It's this or gem of brightness right in its eyes. <laughs> Would be funny. Would be hilarious. And I'm going to drop it directly behind. Initiative count. 22. Am I able to move? Because I have flying boots. Yeah, you can move at half speed while you drag it along with you. I want to drag it two spaces to the west. Sorry, I am slow. In which case, I can move into the beam first. I'm sorry, yeah, no. I need the winged boots. One square and then move one space north. That's as much dragging as I can do. Okay. Then a legendary action. Fear ray on the wizard. I'm immune to fear. Al is still gone. Cleric, you are not within range of a wall. A step southeast one space. Oh, get me out of the zone. Greater restoration. My last fifth level slot on the fighter. Spell has no effect in the anti-magic field. Oh, right. Bonus action. Bonus action, use the spiritual weapon to hit the beholder. Move the hammer behind the thing again. 28 to hit for 14 damage. Use my flying to the south east corner of the beholder. After the cleric is the snake. A snake is gonna fly around from the south. I can do the constrict attack. Plus 6 to hit, reach 10 foot. 21 to hit. It's immune to this because the target is not a medium or smaller creature. Oh. Anything else? That's it. Air elemental. We're gonna use our slam attack. So move forward the one space into contact. Attack number one. That's a 27 to hit. Hits. 15 damage. Lethal. Exactly what you needed. Adventurers have laid waste to the eye beast. They ravaged through its lair, picking up all of its loot. In the loot, they're going to find 42,000 gold, which comes out to 10,500 gold each. They find a suit of plus one plate armor. They find a wand of lightning bolts. They find a potion of invisibility and a potion of supreme healing. After this, the adventurers are going to head off to loot the vampire crypt in a neighboring barony. 
The adventurers have defeated the Eye Beasts, so that's the final encounter in this dungeon. The players will now level up to level 15 and move on to the next dungeon. Next week, I'll release a video with all six encounters from the Eye Beast Lair, and we'll talk about the particular challenges of the different encounters. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Sarsen Zero, and I will see you next time.